Kawe. Um, as uh, some of you were present yesterday, you already know uh, the topic of my speech. Uh, but for those who weren't present yesterday, uh, I think it's going to be, I hope it's going to be interesting to know some new facts about uh, the history of the Armenian Kingdom of Cilicia and uh, most especially about uh, one of the most luxurious and most beautiful Armenian manuscripts commanded by one of the Armenian kings, uh, Hetun II, which is a lectionary, a lectionary book uh, commissioned in 1286 uh, and which is kept today in Madenadaran um, under the number 979. So um, the, the, the main problem connected with the history of Armenian Kingdom is that we have very few sources about uh, historical facts and uh, very often uh, ma many important facts are saturated and uh, the, most of the sources are written by the nobleman for the nobleman and they are in most of the uh, cases made to be happy. The, the kings, uh, they, they present them the way they would like to see themselves and they would like to keep themselves in the memory of uh, the next generations. And uh, Hetum II's case is not an exception. And uh, he is a king about him, um, about whom the history um, is uh, mostly uh, silent because the only sources, that, the only two sources that we have about him is the chronicle written, written by himself, by the chronicle of King Hetun II, and another small chronicle written by, not a small, uh, another chronicle written by his relative, um, Haiton Patnich, uh, the historian Haiton, or Hetun. Um, and um, uh, yeah. He, he got the throne, actually, on February 6th in 1289, after the death of his father, King Levon II, um, he had inherited the throne. But anyhow, uh, Hetum is the only Armenian king who has never been coronated and never got married. And even though uh, most of his brothers and uh, the other members of the court were encouraging him to marry and to to leave an inheritor of the throne after him, he never, they never agreed, uh, they never uh, succeeded to convince him to marry. And uh, so uh, he didn't have an inheritor and this caused a lot of problems uh, after his death. Um, so uh, this, uh, the reason that he has never been uh, married is explained by several um, scholars by the fact that he, he, he was raised in, uh, he was a very spiritual person and he has received a religious education. And um, in the 13th century colophons, Hetum II is uh, very often called the guardian of the throne or the guardian of the crown, but very rarely a king. Um, finally, Hetum exchanged the royal crown with the cape of a Franciscan monk and became a Franciscan monk himself, with, which is an exceptional case for an Armenian king. Most of the historians cannot give the exact date when this happened, when he became a Franciscan monk. But most probably this happened uh, during the last year of, uh, the, uh, of the rule of Levon II, during the last year he was alive the father of Hetum II, because uh, he was very sick already and he, he wasn't able to influence, uh, to, to, to influence his son to change his decision. And uh, in general, Levon II had a very indulgent character, character and um, was very tolerant uh, regarding uh, his son's Latinophile behavior. And first, uh, mm, um, um, I, I would like to mention that there are three people who, who have influenced the decision of Hetum II to become, to, who have most probably influenced the decision of Hetum II to become a Franciscan monk. First of them is Vahram uh, Rabuni, which was uh, Hetum II's teacher in his early childhood, um, who was a very um, smart, intelligent person who had a major role in the court of Levon II who was an advisor in the uh, political 
questions in diplomatic relations. He who was the who, who was the secretary of the court of Levon II, and um, he was the author of numerous important um, theological religious works, and uh, he had made the interpretations of uh, works of Aristotle, Porfir, Gregory of Nice, Denis the Areopagite, and on the basis of these works, Hetum II received his education and became a bibliophile and studious person himself too. Most probably the decision uh, of Hetum II uh, to become Franciscan monk um, took place um, between uh, 1288 and 1289, uh, because at this moment, a member of the Franciscan congregation, Giovanni Montecorvino, was Hetum II's guest at the court of Cilicia. And uh, Giovanni Montecorvino was sent by the Roman Pope to the um, to Asia to convert the people, the nations of Asia, and on his way to Asia, he he was uh, he stayed for a while at the Cilician court, and during this time, they became very good friends with Hetum II, and many scholars many scholars think that it's in his honor that Hetum II took his religious name, Giovanni, which is Hovanes in Armenian. Hetum II abdicated the throne several times. But uh, we don't have the dates of these abdications either. And every time he abdicated, he changed his mind and he came back. And that, that, that is one of the reasons it is so difficult to determine at the dates, the exact dates of these abdications. But it's not even really important to do this. Just the fact that we know that he abdicated and come back all the time is already very interesting and already shows a part of his character that he was not uh, sure if he's the real inheritor of the throne, if he's, he's ready to take this role or not. Um, the first portrait of um, Hetum II is, is seen in the uh, gospel command commissioned by his mother, Queen Geran, in 1272, which is kept today in Jerusalem, in the Armenian Patriarchate. Uh, this portrait shows uh, Hetum with the other members of his family, with his brothers and sisters who were born at the moment, as uh, in their family there they were 50 children. Um, and uh, as the elder son of his father, of Levon II, he is shown just next to his father kneeling, together with his two brothers. And next to him we can see his uh, two years old brother, Constantine, and probably one-year-old Toros, who are represented also as already formulated children, even, of, even though uh, Toros is, was still a baby at the, at the moment of the creation of this manuscript. So we can imagine that the author, the, 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 the painter, um, used uh, Hetum II as a, as a model for his two brothers. Um, if... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, we can find another portrait of Hetum. Yeah, so we see the, the two brothers and the dates of their birth. Yeah, there is another portrait of Hetum II on a reliquary uh, which is uh, made in 1293, which is today in the collection of St. Petersburg, uh, in, in, of Heritage Museum in St. Petersburg. This is the reliquary of Skevra, which is a rare uh, example of Armenian silversmith and which was commended by uh, Catholicos um, Constantin II Kagudetsi of the monastery of Skevra to immortalize the memory of the warriors perished during the seizing of the Hronkla in 1292. And it has also a colophon registered behind the reliquary. Um, here we can see Hetum II kneeling without a crown and Next to him, we can see um, around. The, uh, we can see around. Uh, he's represented in a medallion, kneeling without a crown, and around we can see the inscription "Hetum, the King of Armenia." Um, on the right and on the left of the reliquary are the images of apostles, prophets, and the fathers of the church. The principal image of the exterior door is the Annunciation of the Saint Virgin. Above it is above it is the representation of Saint John, and below it Saint David. Um, 
As Claude Mutafian mentions, um, Hetusekhan's character became the symbol of the propaganda of Catholicism among the Armenians. It is, uh, so it, that's why it's not surprising that we can find another portrait of Hetum II in one of the monasteries of Venice, San Giove. Uh, this was a fresco which, is, which came, came, came down to us, this representation came down to us thanks to Father Alishan, Raymond Alishan, who made the imitation of the portrait. And uh, here Hetum is illustrated with a tonsure, uh, which, is, which was always worn by Franciscan monks and uh, Franciscan cape, and uh, on which we can see also a mantle which, with fur, which, makes, which, which made the part of a royal garment uh, in Occidental royal, royal garments. His right hand is risen in the sign of benediction, and uh, the crown is put in front of him. In the inscription under the portrait, one can read, Blessed Hovanes, Armenian king, put on an ecclesiastic habit in 1294. Further, we can read in Armenian, Hetum II, blessed, Armenian king, brother Hovanes. The last portrait of Hetum II is in the lectionary, as I have already said, the most luxurious manuscript of the Armenian kingdom, the lectionary of 1286, actually in Matanabara. Here we can see several pages from, from the lectionary. <coughs> And this portrait um, was done on the title page, which is opening the lectionary, in front of a page with the representation of Saint Basil. Here's the title page, Saint Basil the Great. Um, on the upper part of the title page, we can see the portrait of Solomon, but the, um, the part that interests us the most is the marginal decoration of this page. Um, here we see a vertical composition that has nothing to do with the textual part of the page. It represents six human characters situated in a vegetal and floral ornaments, uh, which are represented one under the other. Some scholars think that these are the portraits of the members of the royal family. On the top of the marginal illustration, uh, a white-bearded king is seated in a throne, dressed in royal garments. His right hand is on his waist, and on his left hand he's holding a globe with a cross. The character is wearing a mantle on his green dress, which covers his knees. He has a white fur collar on his neck. The king has a long white beard and a crown on his head. He's wearing red shoes. Below him we see another king, which has a blue dress and red mantle which covers his knees and it was the case, as it was the case for the previous king. His hand, his hand gestures are repeating those of the previous king, right hand on the waist and the left hand holding the golden globe with the cross. The main difference between these two characters is the age, which is expressed with the color of their hair and the bird. Um, both of them have halos. Karagin of Sepian was one of the scholars who got interested in this representation and um, he, in his opinion, the first two, char two characters we see in this marginal representation are Levon II and Hetum II. Uh, another scholar specialized in Armenian art, Lydia Durnovo, agreed with him. But the, below these two kings, we can see another four characters and concerning these four characters, the, um, the opinions of the two scholars, of Garigin of Sekan and Lydia Durnova, um, do not agree. The third character is a young man represented on his knees, holding a crown in his hand. He's wearing a dark violet mantle covering his whole body. The fourth character is represented in a fire's pose. He is wearing a white shirt, which is visible under the blue dress and the red mantle covering his shoulders. Uh, with the right hand, he's holding a ribbon attaching his mantle, and his, in his left hand, he has a golden vase. He's wearing red shoes also. The fifth character is represented on his knees, wearing a red dress and a green mantle. He's holding with his both hands a golden jug. The sixth character is represented in the same pose as the first two kings. Right hand on his waist, but in his left hand, he's holding an object which is difficult to identify, as the image is... Uh, a little bit damaged. 
Probably this is a stick uh, in a form of a fleur de lis. He's wearing a green dress and a red mantle, covering, covering his waist and knees. According to Garegin of Sepian's opinion, these four characters are the children of Levon II and Geran, uh, who are represented in the, uh, in the order of their elderness. 15 years old Toros, 11 years old uh, Samba, 9 years old Constantine, and 7 years old Narsnesses. Lydia Durnova has another opinion concerning these figures. She thinks that this, these four characters are the functionary of the palace, each of them represented with the attributes of their function. At the top is the knight with the crown, the guardian of the crown, um, um, who is uh, with his hands kneel, uh, with the crown in his hands and kneeling. The cup bearer Thoro follows him. Then the chamberlain with the jug, and finally the butler with a stick in um, in his hand with the form of the fleur de lis. According to Irina Drampian, these two opinions. Um, are not contradictory. The opinion of Garegin of Sepian and Lydia Durnova are not contradictory, since the characters performing uh, their duties uh, may also be the sons of Levon II, who have been illustrated in this way um, due, um, due to the wish of uh, the commissioner of the manuscript, Hetun II. The miniaturist, uh, the miniaturist representing the portrait of the royal family on the marginal image has adopted the iconography of the tree of Jesse, which is which represents the ancestors of the ancestors of Greece. Um, and this iconography was very often used in the by the Byzantine art to represent the family of the um, uh, the imperial family. And uh, so maybe this iconography influenced also <laughs> Armenian miniature painting. Some circumstances force us to pro uh, partially re refute the opinions of the scientists about the four, uh, first two kings. We believe it is not right to take the second king for Hetum II. In 1286, the date of the lectionary's illustration, he was still a young prince, aged 21 years old, who later refused the coronation and in general in history, he always seemed to be a very modest person. The second character represented in the marginal image, on the contrary, already has, uh, has an assured appearance of a king. He wears a crown on his head, and he is partially identical to the previous king with white hair. In addition, he is represented haloed, and there is a globe in his hand, which is considered the symbol of power and strength. The only portrait of Hetum II that came down to us, during, uh, which was made during the time he was still alive, is the one we saw on the reliquary of Skevra, this one, where he is represented without the crown, kneeling, and sure, without a halo, and there is no symbol of power or strength in his hand. So, and there is no representation of Hetum II neither in the Bible commanded by him in 1295. And so it's, uh, it appears very strange to see uh, his portrait, to, to think that he would like to have his portrait as a sanctified king in a lectionary commissioned by him in 1286 when he was still not even a king. The second reason of our disagreement um, with the proposed hypothesis, it's the, it's the white hair of the, and, and the bird of the first king, which uh, seem appropriate for Levon II, who was barely 50, 50 years old at the moment of the creation of the manuscript. At the same time, if we take into account that the portrait of the royal family is based on the iconography of the tree of Jesse, which is representing the ancestors of Christ, it is supposed to represent a lineage, a dynasty, and the dynasty of Hetumit starts with Hetum I, not Levon II. So uh, this is the way uh, it is mentioned in colophons also. In every colophon where we read about the dynasty, Levon II or Hetum II speaks firstly about their, uh, their father and grandfather Hetum I, who was the, uh, the one who founded this lineage, the, the dynasty. Thus, from our point of view, 
The first king of the marginal image represents Hetum I as the founder and ruler of the lineage. Then the second king represents Levon II as a 50 years old bearded man. He appears as a legitimate king, symbols of strength and power in his hands. And of course, the third character, bareheaded and in his knee, on his knees, is Hetum II, which unlike all the other characters, he represent, is represented in a very modest clothes and head raised up. The crown represented in his hands symbolizes the fact that he was the heir to the throne. The fact that Hetum II is nicknamed the guard of the throne or the guard of the crown in the colophons of the manuscript reminds us once again of his portrait in this miniature, which represents the Hetumid family and when he, where he is depicted holding the crown in his hands and kneeling. As far as the other three characters are concerned, we think that they should be Toros, Sambat, and Constantine, respectively, the objects in whose hands are simply added by the miniaturist as an illustration and uh, perhaps as at the request of Hetum II. In our opinion, this version is more logical, precisely about the identity of the characters studied, since we recognize that the marginal image represents the portrait of the Hetumid dynasty. The years of the lead of Hetum II were the most difficult period of the history of Armenian kingdom. In, condition, in conditions of the lack of governor with strong will, the country was in difficult internal and external situation. On the other hand, uh, on one hand, the Mamluk invasions, on the other hand, the weakening of the Armenian-Mongolian treaty, and the fraternal walls, wars between the heirs in their turn have definitely destabilized the roots of the Armenian kingdom. The irresponsibility of Hetum, Hetum, Hetum has hurt not only the state system of the country, but also the church. In March 1307, at the Council of Cis, organized by the initiative of Hetum II, with the help of Catholic Gregory of Anazaba, Certain decisions were adopted concerning <coughs> theological and ritual questions which supposed to make great concessions to the Roman Church. In general, the dynasty of Hetumids was never loved by the nation, was never supported by the nation, and as they have came to power from the first, well, from the, from the first moment they came to the power with force, and that's why the, the other noblemen and noble houses didn't support them. But the, the, role of, the, the role of this family as the commissioners of art, as uh, people who, who have financed the artists, who have um, beca became the, the, the sponsors of the artists uh, who made the manuscripts and miniature paintings of the kingdom, should not be uh, underestimated, uh, unestimated, should not stay unestimated, because um, grace to them, thanks to them, Today we have the most beautiful and the most interesting works of Armenian art, the most luxurious ones. And however, we need to appreciate the role of Hetum II as a patron of art and literature, which was perhaps the only contribution that he had to the history of Armenian kingdom. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Emma, for uh, 